This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. You as a human being are possessed of potentials utterly unsuspected in nature. There is more to you physically, mentally, and spiritually than you may ever have consciously imagined. Your brain is capable of storing 12 billion bits of information. There is much to you which you may never have recognized. The total length of the blood vessels in your body is approximately 100,000 miles. 100,000 miles of blood vessels inside of you. There is more to you than you've imagined. But if this is true, both mentally and physically, imagine how much more there is to you spiritually than you may ever have supposed there is an unseen dimension to existence which can energize you to new experience and endeavor because the spirit of the infinite is within you and the discovery of that is sheer delight. These unseen spiritual potentials are released by faith. Ernest Rutherford, winner of the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1903, steadfastly refused to believe that atomic energy could ever be released. He said it couldn't be done, but it was. Everyone is familiar with the fact that many skeptics said the Wright brothers would never fly their airplane. But even Orville Wright was in doubt of the full capabilities of aviation. In 1914, Orville Wright said, and I quote, when one comes to increase the size of the craft, the possibility of crossing the ocean rapidly fades away. This is because of the difficulties of carrying sufficient fuel. It will readily be seen, therefore, why the Atlantic flight is out of the question. End of quote. Orville Wright himself said flying across the Atlantic just couldn't be done. He was wrong. You may likewise doubt your own potentials, but beware of such doubt. You are an infinitely valuable son or daughter of the living God of all this cosmos. And when you and God go into partnership, great things can and will take place. Such faith is liberating of your potentials. The teachings of Jesus center on positive attitudes toward life and the universe itself. And this sort of energetic, aggressive philosophy is increasingly substantiated by the findings of modern psychology. Dr. Leela Swell, professor of educational psychology at Queens College in New York, strongly disapproves of the way in which psychiatry has tended to concentrate its emphasis on the failures of people. If you dwell on failure, it will be planted in the subconscious, says Dr. Swell. She prefers to direct the attention of her patients to their strengths, one exercise suggested by this doctor is that of reviewing your entire lifetime, all your relationships and activities, writing down the best accomplishments in these regions of life, then organizing your future around these greatest strengths. Dr. Leela Swell of Queens College in New York says that most individuals operate at only 5 or 10 percent of their true potential. She writes... There is a deep well of power inside us all, but to tap it, we need to get back in touch with who we really are. This was precisely the philosophy of the master. This is what he meant when he said, the kingdom of God is within you. And when he taught people to think of themselves as sons and daughters of God, the great adventure of existence is the task of unleashing your internal spiritual potentials. God has a wonderful and exhilarating will for your life, a plan and a purpose for you, and in seeking it, you can and will discover it. A fragment of the very source of the universe is part of your mind. And to draw upon your internal energies through faith and love is the supreme fulfillment of human life. The more you utilize your spiritual potentials, the more they will increase. The more you exercise a muscle, the stronger it becomes. Physiologists have even made the curious discovery that if you're a typist or a piano player, your fingernails will grow faster than the fingernails of most other people. This principle is spiritually true as well. What you use increases. The more you love, the more love you'll have. The more you live by faith, the more faith you will have. The more truth, beauty, and goodness you express, the more heightened your perception of truth, 
beauty and goodness will become. Faith, hope, love, commitment, all your spiritual potentials can only grow by being used. But determination and valor are required to release these most profound potentials. One vital characteristic of a great man or woman is the power of persistence. In spite of errors, thwartings, and setbacks, the victorious individual is the one who remains unwaveringly loyal to highest values. This persistence in the face of changing circumstances is a characteristic which William Sproul, the railroad president, used to describe as flexible tenacity. Then, too, remember well that life on this planet is brief, and you will probably never have the time to accomplish all the things you wish you could or achieve all the growth in character, mind, and spirit which you desire in this brief lifetime. Eternity is for that. Do not expect to live in errorless infallibility. The ancient Persian rug makers used to weave one error into the design of every rug they made because, as they were wont to say, only God is perfect. Refuse to despair over imperfections. Only God is perfect, but in your quest for God, you will one day achieve perfection of purpose, and that will be but the beginning of new adventures. As you grow as a child of the infinite, grow in the confidence that old things are passing away, that all things are becoming new. You are infinitely valuable, a child of the source of the universe. To know that is really to live. The two alternative ways to view difficulties is to see them as problems or as opportunities. There was a cartoon which showed a school teacher saying to her class, next year, boys and girls, we'll be studying trigonometry, space travel, astronomy, and French. To which one girl in the back of the class says, think of it, new fields to be conquered in, which is one way to view challenges. But the other way is to see them not as new fields to be conquered in, but as new adventures to be undertaken. You cannot always choose the situations you encounter, but you can choose the attitude with which you encounter the situations you encounter, the attitude. And that attitude can be either hope or despair, either faith or fear, and that decision is of immense importance. The famous French artist Renoir, who died in 1919, became so horribly gnarled and twisted by arthritis during the last eight years of his life that his painfully swollen fingers could not even hold a brush, much less paint. Did Renoir despair? Did he capitulate to feelings of failure and futility? Not in the least. He developed a method of strapping his artist's brush onto his right wrist and kept on painting several canvases done even during those last years of arthritic agony are masterpieces have sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars true greatness is characterized by spiritual spunk the stubborn refusal to roll over and die when life becomes difficult you are greater than anything which can befall you circumstances consist of time and space but you consist of more than time and space. There is a fragment of infinity within your mortal mind. You possess personality, living ingenuity, character, soul, the spirit of God, a thinking, perceiving, feeling, acting, and reacting mind, and you yourself are therefore superior to anything which can happen to you. Because the things that happen to you are just that, things. They're not possessed of personality, living ingenuity, character, soul, spirit of God, a thinking, perceiving, feeling, acting, and reacting mind. You are a living, dynamic, vital, spiritual being, a son or daughter of the infinite God, and there is no circumstance or conspiracy of circumstances which you will ever encounter which are possessed with all the living powers and potentials which you possess. You may, of course, suffer defeat temporarily, but bear ever in mind the transitory nature of such defeat. Because if you are living in dynamic faith, as the son or daughter of God you were born to be, you are literally superior to any circumstance which can befall you in time or in eternity. You are an infinitely valuable personality. Your value is unique and individual. Your value is entirely independent of anything else on earth and anyone else on earth. You need not frantically seek to gain the approval of others. Your value does not depend on them. A woman's value, for instance, is not contingent on whether a man is romantically attracted to her. 
And a man's value is not determined by whether a woman is romantically attracted to him. Your value is utterly independent of anything material. You may be physically attractive or plain, tall or short, muscular or frail, but your value as a person is quite independent of any of these things. Your value does not depend on whether or not you are invited to the most fashionable dinner parties or listed in the social register or make large amounts of money in business. Your value does not depend on maintaining a circle of other people who will continually remind you that you're valuable. Health is valuable, but your value does not hinge on whether or not you're healthy. Success may be valuable, but your value does not depend on whether or not you're successful. Friendship is valuable, but your value does not depend on how many friends you have. There is an extraordinary liberation in the realization discovery that your personal value as an individual is utterly independent of anything else on earth. You do not need to bow or grovel or bootlick before any person, any institution, any organization, any religion, or anything else on earth in order to attain or achieve personal value. You are valuable independent of any of that. You are valuable because you're a child of the universe. You belong here. Your place in the cosmos is as planned and assured as the place of the sun and the stars. You are a son or daughter of the infinite God. A fragment of infinity indwells your mortal mind. You need not engage in the frantic, obsessive, compulsive quest to court the approval of others. Your value is independent of others. You may, in fact, be valuable to others. That is sublime. But remember well that your value does not depend on those others. Your value is not validated by vote. It does not require a quorum of consensus among your family, friends, business associates, or anyone else on earth to establish your value. You need not expend one ounce of energy or molecule of worry in begging or pleading or whining or craving the endorsement of anyone or anything else on earth in order to establish your value. Your value is independent of any and all other things. Your value is cosmic, it is spiritual. Your value is of God, not man. Your value is independent of your clothes, car, social clubs, education, wealth, physique, health, criminal record, or anything else on earth. You are valuable to this universe and in this universe because you are valuable to God, a son or daughter of the universal father. And then write to us, will you? We really want to hear from you at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, Life After Death, any and all of this literature. Yours free, without cost, charge, or obligation when you write to us. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell out mailing address, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.